Welcome to Practice Update. I'm your host, Dr. Jennifer Caudill, and joining me today is Dr. Howard Sandler. Dr. Sandler is the Ronald H. Bloom Family Chair in Cancer Therapeutics and a professor and the chairman of radiation oncology at the Samuel Ocean Cancer Institute at Cedar Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. Dr. Sandler, welcome to the program. Thanks. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about um, uh, disease and, and cancer. And, and, and let me ask you: in the medical oncology community, there's always a lot of debate regarding the optimal duration of hormone therapy in association with definitive radiation for localized prostate cancer. So for patients with intermediate risk, you know, what are your thoughts on duration? And what about high risk? Uh, so it's a, it's a very practical and, and important question. Uh, we know fundamentally that hormone therapy and radiation work synergistically together. Mm -hmm. We understand, I think, some of the mechanisms of that synergy mm -hmm. and the survival benefit of hormone therapy plus radiation in various prostate cancer disease states mm -hmm. is extremely well established with high quality level one evidence. And yet there are some questions that still remain. And one of the important questions is the duration of hormonal mm -hmm. therapy. And um, the radiation oncology community is pretty well set on what the duration of hormonal therapy should be okay. for intermediate risk prostate cancer. Uh, intermediate risk prostate cancer is a heterogeneous group, mostly Gleason 7 patients with PSAs between 10 and 20. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very common <coughs> disease uh, subtype, mm -hmm. and we treat a lot of those patients with radiation therapy. So the, uh, the rule of thumb is that short-term hormonal therapy um, is well established in combination with radiation. And uh, short term, by short term, uh, what we mean is four to six months of hormonal therapy. Okay. I think there's pretty good evidence that four months is all that's necessary, but six months would also uh, be considered acceptable. Um, the good thing about short-term hormone therapy, while it does carry with it <clears throat> some risks, some side effects, mm -hmm. um, but given that the duration is finite, um, the recovery from the uh, hormonal side effects tends to be complete. So four months or six months of hormonal therapy uh, has short-term side effects mm -hmm. and has long-term uh, benefits. So it's very important to include with radiation for some, maybe most patients with intermediate risk prostate cancer. Okay. For high-risk patients, the story is a little bit different. Uh, the rationale for using hormone therapy in high-risk patients is to both help with local disease control, but also to treat metastatic disease, okay. and a duration of hormonal therapy has to be longer. Uh, there was an important study from uh, the EORTC that showed that 36 months was superior to six months. So three years is better than six months for high risk. Okay. And that uh, confirmed that long-term hormonal therapy is, is what's required and that you can't get away with short-term in the high-risk patient mm -hmm. population. Mm -hmm. In the US, we've tended to use two to three years, um, maybe more two years. Uh, Europe, maybe more three years. Okay. And, um, uh, and recently, there have been some data that looked in a randomized study at 18 months versus mm -hmm. three years. And uh, there's uh, some uh, indication that for the most important cancer control endpoints, such as uh, disease um, recurrence or okay. a bone metastasis, mm -hmm. that 18 months is adequate. Okay. So I think we're um, that today for long-term hormonal therapy for high-risk patients, I think it would be reasonable to say that 18 to 24 months is an optimal duration okay. and that uh, three years may be um, not uh, required. Mm -hmm. So uh, 18 months to uh, 24 months. And I know that my patients that I put on long-term hormone therapy and I follow them for those two years will be pleased when I, uh, when I tell them that there's new evidence that maybe 18 months will be enough. Sure, sure, I imagine, I imagine. Well, thank you, Dr. Sandler, so much for being with us and sharing your insights today. Yeah, my pleasure, thanks. And thank you for tuning in to Practice Update. I'm your host, Dr. Jennifer Caudill.